Hi guys! Welcome back. This week I'm going to be doing a new modern figure for you. Uh, there's obviously been a lot of sort of skirmish war gaming happening recently. There's been a lot of rule sets in that vein. Osprey in particular has been bringing out a ton of those, uh, one of which is Fistful of Kung Fu. And they kind of worked in cooperation with North Star Miniatures to produce kind of a relevant range of figures to go along with that rule set. And I have one of the figures from that range. And it's this guy. This is a um, supposed to be sort of a Yakuza type guy. He's sort of a big bruiser with his shirt open. And I love this figure. It's a great, really characterful kind of kind of whimsical sculpt, almost. And it is very simple. Obviously, it's just you know pants, a shirt, and his naked chest. So because he's so simple, this is a figure that's really kind of begging for embellishment. And I've been holding on to him for quite a while now trying to figure out what I wanted to do with him and when I wanted to do it. I think now is probably as good a time as any. So I'm going to be covering some things that I've kind of talked about before again, but I think you'll all find useful, like how to paint Asian skin and then how to paint sort of more modern civilian clothing, like, you know, shirts and men's pants. And more importantly, I'm going to be talking about how to do more advanced tattoo work. Now, I did cover tattoos before in my tutorial on painting Celtic warriors with Boudicca, you may remember. But that was pretty simple, basic one color tattoo type stuff. So in this tutorial, I'm going to be doing um, a, a more complicated color tattoo for you, like you at least theoretically are supposed to see on the Yakuza. And this is going to be interesting for people also who want to see a little bit more of, you know, freehand work and, yeah, just tattoos in general. So, yeah, I think that's all. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to start out here by working on the skin. And I'm just going to apply a base coat of German camouflage pale brown. Obviously, since you're working over a black base coat here, you're probably going to need to add several layers to get a good complete coverage. Next, I'm going to apply a wash that's a mix of Reikland Flesh Shade and Seraphim Sepia. So it's a bit oranger than the sort of flesh wash that I normally use. You do want to be careful here that you don't get any pooling or blobs, especially on the sort of belly area. Now the first layer of highlighting I'm going to apply to the skin here is going to take that German camouflage pale brown and just lighten it ever so slightly with a bit of dark sand. So that makes sure that the skin's going to have a slightly yellowish cast, but it's also going to be a fairly dark tan color. I've got my paint pretty thin here so I can layer it on and sort of build it up gradually to get sort of brighter. Uh, stronger contrast on certain areas. You're not going to want to leave that really dark color very much just by itself except down in really extreme recesses. You should probably put at least a light layer of this paint everywhere else. And if you keep it light then some of that dark will still sort of shine through and you'll get some of the benefit from it. Uh, obviously on areas like the face you're going to want to uh, emphasize areas like the nose and the cheeks, the lips, and this guy, because of course he's quite uh, obese, has got some serious double chins, and you're going to want to emphasize those areas as well. And then as always, the next step is to apply a very, very dark um, lining color to areas of extreme contrast where there are really deep folds and creases in the skin. So I'll put it between uh, his fingers, sort of in the middle of his fist. I often use this as a liner to divide the skin from areas of clothing, things like that. And then of course on his face, you're gonna wanna go down in his ears, under his nose, between his uh, lips and chin, and definitely sort of around his eyes, under his brow bones, that kind of thing. Uh, I haven't really changed the color up that I'm using here. It's uh, Vallejo Black Red, which is the same color I used on pretty much every skin tone except the really, really darkest. I'm now just going to continue highlighting the way I was before, and I've just taken that color I was using before, so the German camouflage pale brown with the dark sand in it, and I've just lightened it now even further with more dark sand. And again, I have the color nice and thin. You can see I'm applying it very lightly and building it up gradually. Uh, especially the um, stomach and chest area because you've got these large smooth flat surfaces and it can be tricky to get a good blend going in there. I'm using sort of a feathering technique so I'm applying a lot of very fine uh, light uh, strokes sort of across the surface with my uh, brush and sort of 
look. So and so they sort of fade out toward this, the edges into the darker colors. And I just sort of keep building that up and getting higher and higher colors gradually towards the center. Obviously on that belly you want to emphasize the, the part where it bulges out. You want to emphasize the bulges in his sort of uh, pectoral muscles there. And on his face you want to emphasize his sort of cheekbones, the tip of his nose, his lips and chin of course, that double chin sort of along the top, his ears and his forehead. So again, you're, you're going to be starting to really want to focus on areas like that where you expect a lot of light to be hitting the face. And now I've just made another shade that's sort of an even lighter variant. I think I just took the dark sand here and darkened it ever so slightly with the camouflage pale brown and I'm just building it up again. Now if this figure, only his face was exposed and his hands, I probably wouldn't be uh, making so many layers of paint, but because this is quite an otherwise simple figure and because he's got sort of more than average of his body showing, I consider it important to spend more time and kind of expend more effort on getting a good subtle kind of paint job on his skin, which is why I'm building up more layers here than I might otherwise. But again, it's just the same process, just gradually layering the slightly lighter shade over those areas where we know we want there to be more light hitting. And now this next highlight is a pretty extreme one and it's almost purely dark sand. I think I might have just put just the lightest tint of the brown in but just a whisper that just so it wouldn't be just too too yellow. But again I've got the paint thin so even though it's pure lit yellow it's transparent enough that when it goes on over those browns you're still going to get not too much of a really sort of full-on yellow effect and you can see again I'm just further bringing out and emphasizing high contrast areas. You can see at this point, especially in things like the hands, this is about the time I tend to start emphasizing areas like knuckles and sort of tendons in the hand. Up until this point I won't be doing that but with these highest highlight colors I often do, though I do try to keep the applications kind of subtle and thin. And on his stomach again same thing, I'm uh, focusing it really on the brightest, sort of highest part where the stomach sticks out the most and around just a little edge highlight around the bottom of the belly button. And then this color will get of course built up on his face around his lips and cheeks especially. Uh, and you can see just, but I'm applying just a much smaller amount of it, uh, not really trying to put on too much. And that's just the general rule of thumb, the thumb when you're painting skin is the higher your highlight gets sort of the less you want to apply it to all the same areas, you just want to apply less of it. You want to apply it thinner and you want to make sure you sort of blend it out more. And now I'm going to finish off the skin with a mixture of, of the dark sand and just some white. So this is really quite pale and again I'm emphasizing fingertips, knuckles, things like that. And on the belly I'm going to try to not go too f overboard with this. Uh, I might actually have gone a little too high, but actually, as it turns out, it's not going to matter too much if you over highlight the belly, but you'll see why that is in a little while. But other than that, on his face, you're going to want to apply the, this very light color quite sparingly. I usually like to put little daubs on the tips of the ear, sort of the brow bones, the tip of the nose, just sort of the very tip of the chin and sort of the, sort of the middle of the lips and just a, the, a whisper sort of along the top of the cheekbones because that's really where a lot of light is hitting the uh, figure. And of course with this color in particular you want to make sure it's thin, you want to make sure it's really transparent, you want to make sure, especially like when you're applying it on large surfaces like the stomach and chest, that you really blend it out well and you don't let your application get too heavy. Next uh, I'm going to work on our character's pants and I decided I want these just to be painted in sort of a generic sort of men's business suit style. So I'm base coating them here using a sort of nice overall application of Vallejo German Grey. Once that's dry I'm going to sort of shade in all the recesses here using a mixture of Nuln Oil and Leviathan Purple just so I can get a slightly different cast going. My first highlight on the pants here is going to be a mixture again of the German gray, uh, lightened here with some sky gray, and I have now also mixed just a little bit of purple in. And I've discussed that before when you're painting sort of dark grays and black shades, 
that to keep things from getting too redundant, it can be nice to mix a, a sort of a sort of, of extra color in there to give your gray or black sort of a tone. And I've found purple to be a really nice color for that recently. Uh, you want to add enough purple that you get a distinctly different cast, but it shouldn't be so much that it really looks more purple than it does gray. Anyway, you can see I'm just applying that first color, not everywhere, but what I'm kind of looking at here is where light, and I'm kind of lighting my workspace from above, is uh, striking um, the model and sort of reflecting off of that sort of shiny black base coat. And I'm sort of using that as a guide <clears throat> for figuring out where to apply, especially this first layer of paint. Once that's on, you can really start sort of build on that. But you can see I'm applying it, you know, I'm leaving the darkest shat areas, like between his legs and all those creases sort of in that base color. I, if it, where it's necessary, I sort of blend the color out because you don't want there to be really stark lines too much unless it's a really deep crease. So you, you do need to blend it like so where it goes between his legs. But, you know, basically it's just uh, sort of applying this color and you, and yeah, you can layer it a little bit as well too, just to get it a little, uh, some extra shades and get it a little stronger on areas that you know are gonna end up getting a lot lighter in the future. I'm just gonna continue on now with that same process. I've added in again more sky gray and I have added in more purple. Every time you lighten your shade, you're gonna wanna mix in that tone color again, because if you don't, then it tends to start to kind of fade away, you'll lose it. So you have to keep kind of refreshing that. And I'm just doing the same thing I did in the last step. I'm building it up, but again, I'm starting to focus on progressively brighter areas of the sort of pans and sort of avoid uh, areas that I didn't don't expect to have quite as much light hitting. And indeed, you can see I'm also spending a lot more time blending here, blending this color into the last one. You can see also how when I'm painting folds, I really focus these bright colors sort of um, along the tops of a fold and sort of where sort of a top of a fold should sort of have this very light color and then where the fold kind of goes down or the crease goes down that should be a very dark color and you can have a very uh, sharp division there between the light and the dark actually and that actually looks quite uh, good if you do it properly you'll see that really working to great effect here particularly on the front of these pants and I'm just gonna keep building up layers here. I, I guess there's not really a lot extra I can add. You can just see that I'm just progressively uh, adding more of the light gray into my shade, a bit more purple, and focusing more and more on high creases and areas where light is hitting and just sort of narrowing the areas I'm painting and you know sort of blending into the surrounding areas. So it's just the same places but then just focusing the paint in the higher areas more, blending it out more, and applying just progressively less and less. And I'm actually going to continue on adding two more levels of highlight to these pants, doing the same thing with lightening with gray and adding in purple. And of course, the very last highlight is going to be pretty extreme. I'm going to apply it really mostly just to really sharp high creases, uh, knees and stuff like that, really where I want to emphasize those folds and really blend it out everywhere else. And, you know, again, I might not on other figures spend this much time or put this much attention into layering, but I find, again, because this is such a simple, straightforward figure, you know, you need to expend some extra attention and work on making the, the few areas of the model that are there all the much better. I mean, in some ways, I think these figures are actually harder because a more complex figure, there's a lot of equipment, details, trim, whatever, uh, that distracts the eye. There's a lot to look at there. And so that means that all the individual elements don't necessarily have to be so well painted. But when you've got something like this, it's just this basic, there's really nothing to distract the eye away. And, and so you, it's important that the, the, what is there is painted to a really high level because that's all people are going to be looking at. And so, it, you know, it has to look really, really good. With his pants, I'm going to start working with the tattoos. You can see but I've put a few kind of guidelines down here. They're very rough and sketchy, but it gives me sort of an idea of what I'm going to do. I just used a kind of a soft pencil for this purpose, a very fine pointed one, 
just to sort of very basically figure out what I'm going to do. And I really recommend this when you're doing something like this that involves a lot of complicated freehand work. If you're able to sort of draw or sketch on the model beforehand, you should really do that. Even if it's just as basic as what I have here, because it'll just help you orient yourself better. I did a little <laughs> looking into Japanese uh, sort of traditional tattoos, and what I found out was they're pretty damn complicated, very colorful, very ornate. Um, they often seem to have these sort of full body tattoos, and they tend to like do this thing where they have sort of sort of uh, sort of covering the arms and sort of the chest, but then leaving sort of an empty stripe down the middle. And that's what I'm going to be doing here. And there's a lot of layers and things going on in these tattoos. And it's really hard, of course, probably to really get that perfectly in 28 millimeter. And I'm not going to give you a really detailed tutorial of what I'm doing here, just because it's so complicated. And it's going to vary so much. It, it's, it's probably, you know, it, this is not like a beginner's thing. This is not something I can just give you step by step guidelines to replicating. But basically, what I've started out doing here is the ba base of my tattoo is sort of this green, sort of stripey, wavy pattern. So I've sort of applied stripes here of Vallejo Park green, and then I'm sort of making it look like there's a sort of gradient effect. So they're part, part green, and then there's sort of a lighter faded out stripe towards the top of each line, which I've made by mixing dark sand into the part green. And then I'm taking some um, black green and making sort of a shadow at the base of each line. And I'm also going to use that uh, dark green to sort of put sort of a nice sharp dividing line between the tattooed area and his um, skin area. And as you might guess, I'm using a small brush for this. This is a double zero. Um, any really fine work like this, you'll probably find a smaller brush easier. And I should say on reflection, I probably could have skipped a lot of this because I did end up painting over it and you hardly see it, but you know, nah, live and learn. Over top of these green areas, sort of at least towards the base, I want to have sort of two swimming kind of carp or koi fish. Um, I, in the tattoo reference I looked at, these were fish were actually two different colors, but I'm going to simplify things a bit, obviously. That's necessary, so I'm making them both orange. Though I do have one sort of swimming up and one swimming down, and I'm sort of roughing in the background of the fish here, first by applying a layer of Citadel Jokero orange and then going over it with uh, Fire Dragon orange just to brighten it up. I noticed in these sort of Japanese style tattoos that a lot of the areas were sort of outlined or blocked in with a very dark color and in the tattoo I saw it was a very dark green. So I'm going to be using my black green uh, to do that on my design and what I'm doing here basically is just using that color to sort of define the details of the fish as best as I can. So I'm blocking out around the head, sort of detailing around the fins, the tail. Uh, a few scales where I can, just kind of outlining and sort of defining how they look. Next I ended up sort of adding these sort of wave splash details that are sort of behind the fish, like they're sort of kicking up water or creating kind of ripples as they swim around. And I'm just, what I've taken here is some sky gray and I'm applying that in a sort of a ripply sort of white wave pattern, sort of behind the fish's tails or sort of towards the top of the design and sort of a swirly kind of, I don't know, Asian style, I guess. And you can see just kind of blocking something in there. It's a little bit abstract. And once I've got that in, I'm gonna again take that dark green color and sort of outline around these wave areas very carefully. Now you can see quite a bit has actually happened here since the last clip, and that's because my camera cut out on me. I lost some footage. I'm sorry about that. But on the other hand, this whole process is so detailed and kind of complex, I'm not really sure how much it matters. You can see I painted some flower details on the top of his chest. They're supposed to look uh, kind of like chrysanthemums, which is something you see a lot in sort of traditional Japanese designs. I uh, made a yellow one using Averlin Sunset, highlighted with the flash gets yellow. And I made a red one, which has a base of Vallejo Black Red, and then has Mephiston Red and Evil Sun Scarlet over top of it. Again, I took that a black green and use it to outline the flowers and sort of define petals. And what I'm doing now is I'm taking some thin white and I'm using that to add sort of further details, sort of highlighting the fish's scales and fins, sort of some detailing around 
the tops of the waves and on the flowers. You see this too in Japanese tattoos. Besides that really dark lining color, they often also add emphasis with fine lines of white. And so that's kind of what I'm attempting to do here as well. I really went on just kept messing with the tattoos a lot and just kind of fiddling, trying to even things out, balance it out. I've taken some of the dark sand here, which as you know is a, a flesh highlight color, and I'm using that, I'm working that into some of the larger sort of light areas on the tattoo, like the, the ripples behind the fish and some of the stripes and stuff. And that's kind of an attempt to unify everything and also bring some of the flesh color through, because that's what you'd expect with a tattoo, even a bright colored one like this. And, you know, I really did spend a lot more time messing around with that tattoo than I showed on camera just because it, it just, you know, it wouldn't have recorded or been well or been that interesting if I showed you everything I did because it's a really, with a freehand design like that, you almost never really get it right straight away. You always have to go back and clean things up, sort of adjust details. You have to add extra highlights or shadows or just things have to be balanced out. There's usually just a lot more to do and it's a, it's a lot of just sort of fiddling. It's not an exact science and it's not something that I can probably like, as I again say, give you clear just step-by-step -step instructions for. But I thought, you know, I would show it to you guys anyway just because, you know, maybe it'll be inspirational or just give you some ideas of what's possible. <clears throat> so with that done, I'm going to move on to his shirt, and I decided that this would just be kind of like an unbuttoned kind of men's white dress shirt. Uh, I am working over black, which you would think that sounds kind of crappy <laughs> when you're painting such a light color like white, but you can also get some nice effects that way if you've got patience. <clears throat> I'm applying an overall base coat here of sky gray, and you can see the first coat is really uneven and blotchy but I'm gonna go back in now with the sky gray and start sort of gradually building it up. Uh, my first goal here is to get a smooth, even coat. I don't want any of that sort of blotchy black showing through, but my second goal then, <clears throat> beyond that, is to try to work with or sort of use some of the paint's transparency to my advantage because it's a really light color. And so I'm gonna start, uh, once I've got sort of a reasonably even coat, I'm then gonna start building that uh, color up more over areas that I'm planning to highlight or kind of be brighter. And I'm using the same principles on the pan, sort of seeing where the light really hits and then sort of emphasizing those areas with uh, the gray and just going over and over and sort of building them up and creating a really sort of strong base, which I'm then going to use when I start applying my white. I'm still following the principle of this is a simple figure, so I need to spend extra time and spend and do extra shading in all of the areas. So now I've taken a mixture of the sky gray and white, and I am going to start layering that over the um, light areas, the highlights on the um, shirt, really building it up on the tops of all those wrinkles and folds on his collar, everything like that. Again you'll have to probably make several passes here because you want to keep applying the color uh, as long as it continues to get brighter when you apply it. And with light colors like this that are this transparent, you can go on doing that for a really, really long time before the color truly gets saturated. So this is, again, a really long process. I'm just, it's, it's almost boring because I just keep going over and over and over the figure again and again with the same color, just very gradually lightening it up. And it is tedious, but the end result is going to look really, really nice and you're gonna get a really nice, subtle sort of shaded effect. I then do the same thing using white paint, and this t it's the same thing, again, going over and over and over, building the paint up in many, many layers. And this probably takes even longer than before because gray, light gray is, is fairly tedious to build up, but white is even worse. And you really just have to go over the figure so, so many times before you really get that white up to its full uh, saturation and you don't just look like you have a gray shirt. Um, one thing you can do to sort of speed this process along is you can apply sort of several layers with reasonably thin paint. I think I've said this before, but then once you've got some sort of layers and, uh, and texture built up and you really know the areas you want to be really bright, shiny white, then you can go back in with a very th relatively, not very, but a relatively thick white paint that is 
which and then just apply it there and because it's so thick and heavy it means you'll get that saturated bright white color a lot uh, faster uh, without as, as much layering and you know that'll save you quite a bit of time on those places but you know if you want to get a really good job a lot of subtle shades and variations in blending the best thing is just really going to be put it in the work and the time and just you know keep building those layers up over and over and over and just going over the shirt i don't know how many times i even just with the white paint here i probably must have gone over the shirt sort of going around and around and around i would guess four or five maybe even six times before i felt like i'd really gotten it as bright and light as i wanted and i'm remember i'm only working with just one paint color here i'm not really having to mix anything it's you can you can do an amazing amount when it comes to light colors at least just with one or two colors but just applying them transparently and gradually building them up the figure's basically done at this point, but we've got some sort of small details we need to finish up to get a good result, uh, which are mostly going to consist of his shoes, his belt, and his hair, which are all predictably going to be some shade of black. So I'm going to start out just by base coating all of those areas with uh, Vallejo Black. I'm then going to apply a first highlight here using German Grey, which you can see I'm just kind of applying very carefully blocking the areas in and leaving sort of the black as sort of a seam between um, the the black areas and other places. On the hair, I'm doing something a little different. I want the hair to be black, but I want it to have a slightly different tone. I want it to be a little bit brownish black. So uh, I've mixed some of the German camouflage pale brown into my German gray, and I'm going to use that when I am highlighting the hair. I'm then going to continue highlighting. I've mixed a little bit of sky gray into my German gray here just to lighten it subtly. And I'm going to use that to apply a second highlight to both the shoes and the belt. Um, when it comes to the hair, I'm going to use that color I just mixed with the German gray and the slight brown cast. And I'm going to lighten it sort of too. Uh, again, mixing a little bit more brown. And I'm going to use that as sort of a highlight on the hair, which you can see is starting to look a little bit gray. But don't worry, we'll fix that. Uh, I'm not going to highlight the hair then anymore because it needs to stay dark and subtle. As for the shoes though, I'm going to mix in a little bit more of sky gray, lighten it even more uh, and so that I can get some more sort of extreme uh, shiny looking sort of effects on the sort of the tips and heels of the shoes or sort of along the top of the belt because it's black sort of shiny leather, at least that's what you'd expect. You can then even, if you want, take even just some dots of pure sky gray and use that to very sort of delicately add some really high shines. But if you do that, make sure you keep those sort of uh, bits very uh, small and subtle. Now I'm going to just really quickly highlight the belt buckle here using some Vallejo Air Silver. I'm just going to kind of just put that paint over it. You can shade it a little bit with a slightly darker metallic mix if you want as well. Then I'm going to do some stuff with washes just to help unify bits. I'm taking a light wash of Nuln Oil on the belt and shoes just so that I get a, a nice sort of consistent sort of overall black cast to those areas. It'll help further sort of define them away from the uh, pants. And I've also now applied an Agrax Earthshade wash to his hair, and that's again to just sort of bring in that ever so slight brown cast into the hair. Um, and it's also going to help, especially with that sort of over lightened areas on the hair, <clears throat> it'll help tone that down and also <clears throat> add color into the sort of the in between the strands. Once the brown wash is dry, I'm then going to go back in with a non oil wash, and I'm going to use that uh, sort of sparingly, I guess, to apply extra shadows to the hair in areas where it should be darker, and you can kind of build up some layers of that. And this is, again, it helps unify the hair. It tones down the grayness and just brings it all together. If you want, you can just go back over it and put some very small gray highlights very sparingly in a few areas after the wash is done, just to bring back a little bit of shine. So here's our finished kind of uh, fantastic uh, big fat Yakuza enforcer type figure with his massive chest tattoos. I did like painting this figure. He was a lot of work, despite being so simple. Uh, obviously, I spent a lot of time shading um, 
and highlighting this figure. And of course, I spent quite a lot of time on the freehand tattoos. Honestly, I enjoy figures like this quite a bit more than more complex figures with lots of equipment and piping um, and things like that going on. And it's not because I really spend more time on those figures. They take longer necessarily. It's just, I mean, because this figure took quite a lot of time too. It's just I, I that type of work where you have to switch colors, where you have to switch what you're doing constantly, and you're painting little bits all the time. I don't like that. I'd much rather spend a lot of time on large areas making them look really good than I would just paint lots of little bits. Because when you're doing this kind of work, it really gives you a chance to practice your painting skill and really show off how well you can do it. If you're painting lots of little bits, you're not really gonna get a chance to do that very much. So for me, this kind of work is way more rewarding. And I know the chest tattoos are probably, I probably didn't explain that very well. It's, it, it's not something I feel like you really can explain in the same way you can how to paint skin or uh, clothing or whatever. I think it's just something you have to like, enjoy and want to do. And I don't think it's for everybody. Um, I think you have to have some sort of you know, you have to be somewhat artistically inclined beyond just wanting to paint minis. You have to really enjoy, you know, that kind of freehand work and have some talent for it or just like practice it and work at it. Um, but it does greatly enhance a figure, even if you do it kind of crudely. And, you know, so it is a skill that can be worth learning if you really want to kind of take your figures to the next level. So again, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it, share it, leave me your comments. Let me know what you thought, of course. Uh, and you can always subscribe to this channel as well to keep up with latest uh, things that I'm up to. So uh, that's all for now, and I will see you next time.